Hello, I'm Nathan Isbell. I'm with Southern Star Central Gas Pipeline, and we transport natural gas. We understand natural gas is a very important part of everyone's energy. And we also know that there's other energy sources that we have to work together with to make a clean energy future, like solar, wind, hydrogen, and natural gas. They can all work together. And I'm part of the Stars of Sustainability, which is a group all of our employees here at Southern Star are part of. And so we're always looking for finding ways to promote how to save energy and how to work with wildlife, which is a lot of what this book is about here today called Tree of Life, the World of the African Baobab. It's written by Barbara Bash. And some people say Baobab. If you're in Africa, a lot of times that's the way you'll hear it. But it's about a special type of tree in Africa. In the oldest times, as the Kung Bushmen of Africa tell the story, the Great Spirit gave each animal a tree to plant. Hyena arrived late and was given the very last tree, the Baobab tree. Being a careless creature, he planted it upside down. And that is why its branches look like gnarled roots. The Baobab grows on the dry savannas of Africa. Reaching crookedly into the air, it stands silent and ancient. Many people believe there are no young Baobabs, that they spring into being full grown. Perhaps this is because the young, slender trees look so different from the older ones, right here. They begin to thicken and twist after 40 years of growth and can eventually measure up to 40 feet across and 60 feet high. With a lifespan of more than a thousand years, baobabs outlive nearly everything on earth. Sour gourd tree, cream of tartar tree, monkey bread tree, the elephant of plants, they are, there are many names for the baobab. The African people also give each old baobab its own special name, beginning with um, which means mother. For them, the baobab is filled with mystery, and they honor it like an elder. For most of the year, the baobab stands leafless and bare, but twice a year, the rains come, and for a brief period, the tree leaves come out and bloom. Sometimes, even, even before the rains begin, the baobab senses the coming moisture and sends out its soft new leaves and flower buds. Soon, birds arrive to make their nests in the baobab's hollows. The yellow-colored lovebird, right here, and the moss swallow perch in the high branches. That's this one up here. The old tree starts to hum with life. Under the opening leaves, the orange-bellied parrot, lilac, this is the orange-bellied parrot, the lilac-breasted roller up here, and the yellow-billed hornbill over here also make their homes. Once the yellow-billed hornbill has chosen a hollow in which to lay her eggs, she seals herself inside with the mud. Her mate feeds her insects through a tiny slit for more than six weeks. Then when the eggs have hatched, and the babies are large, she breaks out of her crowded protective prison. The chick rebuilds the damaged hole and they are fed by their parents for three more weeks until it's time for them to break out and fly. So you're seeing inside the tree here, but that's all they can see of each other is this tiny hole where their beaks can meet. And all kinds of bugs here. Soon after the rains begin, the baobab is full of activity. Tiny sweat bees build slender tunnels leading to their hives inside the tree. The cottonwood bull, bull worm eats the baobab wood, while the longhorn beetle, elegant grasshopper, and masonga caterpillar munch the foliage. In the center of the tender leaves, cotton stainer bugs, flea beetles, and long-tailed mealworms cluster and chew. So lots of activity going on here. There's some cute creatures too. At twilight, the large white flowers begin to open. Small furry creatures called bush babies emerge from their hollows in the tree and smell the sweet nectar. They dart from branch to branch like little elves, pushing their face into flowers, lapping up the nectar and carrying the sticky yellow pollen on their, onto the next bloom. The soft leaves rustle as the bush babies chirp and scurry about. 
Deep in the night, the fruit bats arrive to drink the flower nectar. The mothers fly with their young pups holding on to their fur. The restless fluttering goes on all night. Standing under the dark tree, one might think there were spirits in the baobab branches. In the morning, the flowers that opened the night before have fallen to the ground, and a pair of eland comes to lap up the soft petals. A trio of impalas also munches the petals quickly, keeping a watchful eye on the horizon for signs of danger. No one seems to notice the tiny dick dick that hides in the lush grass nearby. It's a tiny baby antelope. In the distance, a long giraffe reaches for the baobab's tender leaves. In a few weeks, the rains end, and the baobab's leaves begin to fall, exposing the weaver nests. The male red-headed weaver has been weaving a hanging nest with a long entrance spout at the end of a branch, while the buffalo weaver has built a spiky clump of twigs. Both next nests protect the bird's eggs from dangerous snakes. When the nests are complete, the male weavers attract females for the new homes they've built. But if the females don't like the nest, the males must start all over again. The tree is full of weaver nests, and the birds dart busily in and out. Uh-oh, what do we got here? When all the leaves have fallen, the fruit begins to develop. Soon, hundreds of big melon shapes hang from the bare branches. Before long, a family of baboons arrives to feast on the fresh fruit. They spend the whole day in the baobab, cracking open the hard velvety shells and scooping out the sweet pulp of all the fruit they can reach. Seeds fall to the ground as the bamboo, baboons scamper and squirtle. After the fruit is gone, the baobab is very still. A boom slang snake drapes its long body over a gnarled branch and waits. A praying mantis turns its head its large eyes ever watchful. A stick insect, which it's hard to see, but he's blended in right here. A stick insect hides from the snake in plain sight, looking very much like a twig. A flapped eared chameleon is also camouflaged in the branches. It turns the color of its surroundings and does not move. Very hard to see up here too. Sometimes, the stillness is broken by the call of the honey guide bird, ay ay ay, and the voices of tribesmen who follow close behind. The bird dips and swoops, flash flashing its white tail feathers until it gets closer to a hive in the baobab. Then the honey guide perches quietly nearby and waits for the hunters to find the hive. The men climb the baobab, smoke out the bees, and scoop out the honey but they always leave some beeswax behind as thanks to the honey guide bird. So this is like a bird that knows where to find the honey. To the African people, the baobab is more than a source of honey. Its bark is stripped for baskets and rope. Its fruit is made into candy and sweet drinks, and its roots and leaves are used as medicine. On the hot, dry savanna, the hollow trunks of ancient baobabs can also become water containers and even shelters. At the end of the long dry season, the thirsty elephants arrive and begin to eat the baobab bark, extracting juices from the soft fiber. With their enormous strength, the elephants strip away all the bark and pull down large chunks of wood, leaving gaping holes in the trunk. But the baobab heals its wounds, pr producing new bark and, and keeps growing. Finally, after many, many years, the old baobab dies. Perhaps too many elephants have chewed the wood and weakened its structure, or insects have broken down its inner core. One day it collapses in on itself, a melted heap of ruins. Over time, only a soft mound of powdery fragments is left. The wind will blow these away until nothing of the baobab remains. In the sky, the clouds begin to build from the coming rains. Near the dust of the dead tree, a baobab seed has sprouted. It is all alone on the wild savanna. Now the story of the baobab begins all over again. And that's a long journey. So 
What I liked about this book was it tells about the importance of one type of tree for so many different kinds of animals. So that's why it's important to maintain certain species. We wanna make sure that there's diversity out there because we have so much different life lives to support, even for one simple tree like a baobab. So thanks for reading with us today.